वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंडा फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ माइक्रो प्रोसेसर एट जीरो एट सिक्स वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू मेमोरी इंटरफेसिंग विद एट जीरो एट सिक्स माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई नो स्टूडेंट्स आर टेलिंग मी मैनी टाइम्स सर दिस इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक बट लेट मी टेल यू वन थिंग वंस यू सी दिस वीडियो दिस इज जस्ट आइस ऑन द केक you just see this video till last i can give you guarantee that you will be having exact idea about how to interface memory with 8086 let us try to understand this step by step so my dear students here question is to design following system with 8086 microprocessor here 8086 is working with minimum mode and frequency is 8 megahertz and we are deal with to interface 64 KB of EEPROM using 32 KB of EEPROM, and we are delivered to interface 128 KB of RAM using a chip of 64 KB of RAM. Now, my dear students, before I explain you how to interface this, you should know how many things that you will have to learn. See, to interface this memory, you should know how many. different categories of lines that we need to interface see first of all you should know how many address lines are there secondly you should know how many data lines are there then you should know how many control lines are there and then you should know how to do chip select once you know this four operations you can easily interface this memory now i'll explain you how to identify all these answers so first of all you should know my dear students how many chips are required so let us talk about ep rom first so my dear students here we are deal with to have 64 kb of ep rom using the chip of 32 kb of ep rom so obviously how many chips that you need to have two chips two chips of 32 kb of ep rom will make 64 kb of ep rom my dear students one more thing that you should know with 8086 we are having even and odd addressing so one chip will be having even address and second chip will be having odd address that you must know right with 8086 memory interfacing one chip will be there with even address and second chip will be there with odd address right now let us try to understand how many data lines are there and address lines are there for address lines of 64 kb of ep rom how many addresses will be there as per k 2 to the power 10 and 64 is having 2 to the power 6 so in total 2 to the power 16 so you can say total 16 address lines are there so to have 64 kb of ep rom you should have 16 address lines and this is 64 kb b means byte so for byte you should have eight data lines right and my dear students for ep rom it is erasable programmable rom you need to have memory read control signal only so you see three answers that we have already got address lines data lines and control lines right now let us calculate this for 128 kb of ram using 64 kb of ram so 128 kb of ram that you need to have by having 64 kb of ram so how many chips that you need to have two chips of 64 kb of ram will make it to 128 kb of ram here also my dear students you should know one chip is there for even address and second chip will be there for odd address with 8086 memory interfacing always there will be pair of chips of memory one chip will be there with even address and second chip will be there with odd address how to have it that in i'll explain you don't worry about that it is very easy you just need to see this video till last let us calculate address lines again so address lines for 128 kb you see with k 2 to the power 10 and 128 means 2 to the power 7 so in total 2 to the power 17 means how many address lines are required 17 address lines are required right for data line 
here you have KB, you see byte is there. With byte, how much data lines are there? 8. So 8 data lines are there, right. Now my dear students, control lines with RAM that you should know, RAM is random access memory. So memory read as well as memory write, both are required as a control signals, right. Now my dear students, let us try to understand the heart of this video that is chip select and for that you will have to do memory mapping. Now see in memory mapping, how many chips are there? You just mention it over here first. How many chips are there? Two chips of 32 KB of EEPROM and two chips of 64 KB of RAM. So you see here I have mentioned two chips of EEPROM, two chips of RAM. Now whenever you interface memory with 8086, remember this, you will be writing lower byte of EPROM, higher byte of EPROM, lower byte of RAM, higher byte of RAM like this. Or you can write it in this way, EPROM of E1 address, EPROM of odd address, RAM of E1 address, RAM of odd address. You can prefer any of this name, right? The reason is, there are some basics that you must know, that's why I'm telling you. See, lower byte that you can mention, then higher byte, or you can mention it in this way, even address and odd address, right? So I have mentioned it like lower byte, higher byte, lower byte, higher byte. Now, you see here I have written EPROM, and here I'm having RAM. Now, my dear students, there are a few basic things that you should know. See, this RAM that is starting from 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex location. Always remember this. RAM will always start from 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 hex location. So whenever you interface memory and in different types of memory RAM is given, then you will have to interface RAM starts from 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex location. And read only memory that should have ending address that will be FFFF. Why the reason is when you restart 8086 at that time it will be having initiation with FFFFF0 location and it should be there with ROM. That's why ROM will be there with final address FFFFF hex. So you see here I'm having EPROM. So I'm considering final address of EPROM that is FFFF. And initial address of RAM that will be 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex. So this is one thing that you should know. So whenever you have memory interfacing, ROM's last address that you need to write first that is all F. And RAM's first address that you need to write that is all zero, right? Now my dear students, you will have to see what is the size. So you see, if you talk about EPROM, then with EPROM, how many address lines are there? 16. So as if you want to write starting address of EPROM, what has to be that starting address? In its starting address from ending address, how many lines are there? 16. So A0 to A15, total 16 lines that will change from all 0 to all 1. Right. So here A0 to A15 that will be there with changed data and this A19, A18, A17 and A16 that will remain as it is. So you see now starting address of EPROM that I have identified as per size of address lines. So that is this four lines are as it is A0 to A15 that we are storing inside. Right. So here I will be mentioning that as per all zeros over here and that will gives you 1111 one, one, one means F and then after all zeros are there means F0000 zero, 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 zero hex that is my starting address. Now similarly with RAM what will be my ending address? So you see with RAM we have 17 address lines right so A0 to A16 that will changes to all ones so you see this first three bits that is 0 and A0 to A16 that is getting changed from 0 to 1. So that is my last address 
of ram 2 right that that gives you 1 you see 0 0 0 1 so that is 1 and then all f hex are there right so that is how starting and ending address that we can identify now very interesting thing that is coming in front of you my dear students you see this ep rom that is having e1 address or you can say lower byte so e1 address is having a0 is equals to 0 right an odd address which is there with ep rom 2 or you can say higher byte memory so that is having a0 that will be always one right so here see this a0 that should be your focus right with all memories so with lower byte or you can say with e1 address memory a0 will be 0 you can directly understand e1 means what a0 should be 0 right and odd means what a0 should have 1 so higher byte is having odd address lower byte is having e1 address you see over here also you will have to substitute 0 for lower byte and 1 for higher byte right so that is how you just define a0 now it is very simple my dear students ending address of EPROM in that this four ones are as it is and then all zero that will get changes to all one so this will be f f f f e hex which is last address of EPROM one and similarly with EPROM two here next you will be having one over here and this should be zeros it should start from f triple zero one two it will end up to f f f f similarly over here you see we are having a0 to a16 location which is there with ram1 so you see this is 0 with e1 address now a1 to a16 that should changes from 0 to 1 right so here ram1 that is having 1 f f f e that is my location and now ram2 is having starting location that will be as per you see now these all are 0 right so that will be starting from 0 0 0 0 0 1 hex so that is how starting and ending address that we can identify and to have chip select you should see unused line so with this ep rom this a16 a17 a18 and a19 are unused and for ram a17 a18 and a19 that is unused you see right now what we will be doing is we will be giving active low chip select so eprom1 and eprom2 that will be having this a16 to a19 line that is 1 so that we will be directly giving it to nand gate and ram is having a17 a18 a19 that is 0 so after inversion we will give it to nand gate you see how do we provide memory interfacing and here chip select is very essential right other things are very easy and you see here minimum mode that i have shown you should know my dear students minimum mode of 8086 by using minimum mode we can have a0 to a19 address lines and d0 to d15 data lines and bus high enable these are the terminals that we will be using for address and data and here you should know control signals that we will be using as memory read and memory write now let us try to understand chip select so here with eprom i have told you a16 a17 a18 a19 those are constant those are one so directly i am giving it to nand gate and for ram we were been having a17 a18 a19 those are zero so after bubble i am giving it to nand gate now my dear students you should know here we are having two eprom chip and here we are having two ram chip one ram chip and one eprom chip acquires e1 addressing and second acquires odd addressing right so for that you should know see e1 select will happen when a0 is equals to 0 and odd will get selected when bus high enable that is equals to 0 so here after or gate i am providing e1 select and here this 
after OR gate, I am providing it with bus high enable. So, this terminal that will select odd IC address and this terminal that will select E1 address of IC, right. E1 address of IC is having data from D0 to D7 and odd address IC is having data from D8 to D15. Now, my dear students, we have this E1 and odd select for EPROM. Similarly, we can have it for RAM, right. So, you see this unused line and A0 BHE that is generating our chip select. Now, my dear students, let us have ICs. Here, I am showing you EPROM with E1 IC, EPROM with odd IC and here we are having RAM with E1 IC and RAM with odd IC. My dear students, first of all, you should know how to connect chip select. So, E1 that I need to connect it from here with chip select and this odd that I need to connect it with chip select over here. E1 will be connected with chip select and odd will be connected with chip select. Now, my dear students, you should know control signals. So, EPROM is having only memory read that we need to connect it with output enable bar, OE bar, output enable bar. So, by having this, we can have memory read operation. So, you see output enable is connected with memory read, right. Here also with RAM, we have output enable for memory read, but with RAM, we have memory write also. So, here I have connected memory write. This is what we are generating by having this 3 cross 8 decoder, right. Now, my dear students, let us try to understand how address lines are there. So, I have already told you with EPROM, how many address lines are there? 16, A0 to A15, those address lines are there. And with RAM, how many address lines were there? 17, A0 to A16, we have already calculated that, that I am connecting it over here. Now, my dear students, for data with EPROM of E1, we will be connecting D0 to D7 data and with odd, we will be connecting D8 to D15 data. So, this is complete memory interfacing with 8086. So, this is all about memory interfacing, my dear students. Here, only few things that you need to know, E1 and odd addressing, right. E1 memory that will get selected by A0 is equals to 0, odd will get selected by BHE bar, that's it, right. And few basic changes that you need to see in memory mapping. And still if any confusion is there, what I want is you just post that in comment box so that we can have proper discussion. Thank you so much for watching this video.